For a lot of programs, a nine-win season would be something that not only would be considered a big-time success at that school, but something that would be talked about even years down the road. But at Stanford, a nine-win season, eh, that's all right, but higher goals than that. And Despite winning the North Division last year at the Pac-12, Stanford fell short against USC not once, but twice when you count the Pac-12 championship. It was a Stanford team that went 9-5. and five. And David Shaw, who's averaged more than 10 wins per season, now entering year number 8 at Palo Alto, could have his best offense in quite some time. And one of the biggest reasons, yeah, Bryce Love. Talking about the Heisman Trophy runner-up from last year. In fact, it's the fifth time in the past nine years, if you can believe this, that Stanford has finished second in the Heisman Trophy race. Um, you know, prior to Love, you had, you know, uh, McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey, as well as Andrew Luck, who finished runner-up in 2010-2011, and Toby Gerhardt in 2009. Stanford does have a Heisman Trophy winner and Jim Plunkett, but that was back in 1970. So Bryce Love, optimistic that you know, he can have another huge year and perhaps, perhaps win that stiff arm trophy. And you look at last year's numbers, wow, over eight yards of carry, 2,100 yards plus rushing for the season, 19 touchdowns, a guy with pure explosiveness. We're talking about Bryce Love. And matter of fact, the top five rushers for Stanford do return. Uh, Cameron Scarlett, um, he'll be a quality backup for Love. In fact, Scarlett will be returning kicks. And you have Trevor uh, Spates back as well. So Stanford's ground game will be one of the best in college football. Quarterback position, K.J. Costello is back last year as a freshman. We saw him play. You know, Keller Chris we thought would be the main guy, but Chris had injury issues was inconsistent as well, but Costello uh, did fairly well. 14 touchdowns, only four picks. Of course, it's an offense that runs the ball predominantly, but when Costello threw, he at least didn't throw a lot of picks. Does have to overcome a hip injury entering this year, though, but uh, K.J. Costello um, didn't make too many mistakes. The thing, though, that Stanford really has to do is improve upon the completion percentage. It was only at 57%. And again, I know that Stanford is going to be a run-first type team. You still have to show that ability to complete passes, so the completion percentage has to improve. Wide receivers, um, you return quite a few of them, including J.J. Arcega, Whiteside, now entering his junior year, had 48 catches for the Cardinal, almost 800 yards receiving, and nine touchdowns. Tritton Irwin is back for his senior year. He had 43 catches a year ago. And maybe the best tight end in the patch, well, a guy that will have a field future is Caden Smith. Now, offensive line did lose some talent, but they do return quite a few pluses to a line that, of course, paved the way last year for Bryce Love to have his mega season. You got Nate Herbick back at left guard. Already, Athlons has him as a second-team All-American, 6'4", 348. Watch for him. Walter Little was a five-star recruit coming out of high school, and so far, so good for him. We saw him start six games last year. Probably will be the left tackle. At the center spot, uh, Jesse Burkett, not to be confused with the Major League Baseball Hall of Famer, but Jesse Burkett, um, he's already on the Remington watch list. He'll occupy the center spot. And the right side has a couple of fifth-year seniors on it at tackle, A.T. Hall, and at the uh, guard position, Brandon uh, Faneca. So Stanford, once again, we know how terrific they are as far as run blocking. And even though the passing department wasn't the strong suit for the Cardinal, at least the offensive line uh, kept Costello pretty well protected, um, only 17 sacks a lot. And by the way, if you're curious, uh, Keller Christ, who did play quarterback last year for the Cardinal, uh, he decided to uh, be a graduate transfer. He's going to play his final year at Tennessee. And if the Cardinal passing game can get it going and make that offense a truly two-dimensional threat, to beat a Pritchard will be a big reason why. Pritchard, who was a uh, defensive coach not long ago for Stanford and then became a, a running backs coach and then recently you know, had his hand with the quarterbacks as well as the receivers coaching them. Well, now he's been promoted to offensive coordinator, and he will take over for Mike Bloomgren, who took the head coaching position at Rice. Defensively last year, Stanford, well, they bended quite a bit, especially against the run. We know this because the Cardinal ranked in the lower half of the Pac-12 in rush defense, giving up almost 170 yards on the ground per game. 
And later this year, it's going to be even bigger challenge because you only have one full-time starter back on that front, and that's Dylan Jackson. However, the other defensive end, uh, Joe Von Swan, did play some last year as a freshman. Strongest area for the Cardinal, I think, is going to be at linebacker, especially inside linebacker. Bobby Okereke is back 96 stops a year ago. Should be all Pac-12 by the time this season's over and had four sacks. And another inside linebacker, Sean Barton. They welcome him back. Hopefully he can stay healthy this time after a knee injury derailed him after just three games in 2017. And you do have Jordan Perez adding depth at the inside linebacker spot. Secondary, lost a couple to the NFL. Uh, Justin Reed was one of them at safety. You do have Elijah Holder coming back at the corner spot. And Frank Bunkin, not too bad of a safety, three interceptions a year ago. Well, let's break down the Stanford schedule. And if the Cardinal can get out of those first five games with at least four wins, I think they're going to have a double-digit winning season. That is the difficult part of their schedule. San Diego State will not be an automatic W. Last year, the Aztecs beat Stanford. The following week, defending Pac-12 champions Southern Cal, the Trojans last year, beat Stanford not once, but twice, including the Pac-12 championship. But at least you get them at home this time. Two weeks later, Stanford will see how they handle the pressure of playing on the road for the first time in 2018 when they have to go to Eugene to face the Ducks. And then the following week at South Bend against a very good Notre Dame defense. And then you wrap up the first half of the schedule, at home at least, against a good Utah team. The second half of the schedule doesn't look anywhere near as daunting, but there is that November 3rd game at Washington. I think Bryce loves the favorite to win the Heisman, and I think the Cardinal offense is good enough alone to give them at least a nine-win season. The problem, though, is that game at Washington, Huskies have fewer question marks, especially on the defensive side. So I look for Stanford to come close, but not quite in the North Division. I've got Stanford picked second. That's my look at the Cardinal. See you next time.